boys and girls, this is a video I was hoping to never have to do, and it was something that subject I was never have to talk to when it came to the world of Warhammer 40k. Now, I've been a fan all that long. I've met many of fans out there that have been around since, you know, the 90s and some of the earliest editions out there, and I've seen a lot of guys out there that have been around much longer than I have, but considering the way that a lot of the rest of the gaming community and the way they lost the rest of the cultures and the content had gotten out there and the way they've gone completely and totally insane with a lot of the nonsense, the diversity, inclusion, and equity, I was saw a place like Warhammer 40k with all of its grim darkness and all of its gritty, crazy, kind of wild nonsense was a place that really you couldn't pull that off very well because, well, things are just kind of gnarly and nasty out there and it's literally the whole future is nothing but war. So it's one of those situations where you'd think all of that kind of stuff would be kind of a little bit perplexed by that. Plus you have an extremely strong fan base out there, that community, that fellowship behind Warhammer 40k is absolutely wonderful. They're very, most of the guys I've met and talked to are very cool. They're very welcoming. They're very talking about it. They want to know, you know, they want to see where you're at. They want to know things. Like a lot of the guys I've hung out with are very cool. They're very nice about all that kind of stuff. And I just, I love the lore, right? That's what really got me started into Warhammer 40k. I love the lore. I love learning about all that kind of stuff. I love the idea of the Space Marines, and then of course, when we lost, uh, me like a lot of other people out there really decided to delve into uh, Warhammer 40k after we heard that Henry Cavill was going to get attached to uh, get to run the Amazon show and the movie and stuff like that. He was going to be the executive producer and he was going to star and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, I've always been kind of interested in Warhammer 40k, always thought it was too daunting to get into, and so I was like, let's go. We'll start off with some more videos, we're checking out some people, found a lot of great guys out there. Um, you could talk, uh, uh, of course, Luton09 was one of the first ones I found. He's got absolutely incredible lore videos, very long, wonderful stuff. If you want something that's just a little snippet out there, Major Kill's great. Um, I've even made some more Hammer 40K videos in the past for some other channels and stuff out there. And it's one of those situations I just have a passion for. It. I really enjoy the universe. I'm a big Dark Angels fan. That's just, I like, I got into them completely until I made I was like, ooh, green. I like green. Let's go see what those guys are all about. And it turns out they got all this crazy lore and the lion's back. It's great. So it's been a fun time, right? I've been really enjoying this. And I thought with, like, the Sisters of Silence, and we've got, like, you know, of course, there are nuns with guns, the Battle Sisters, and all that kind of stuff. We figured, like, they kind of hold debate about Space Marine and having people, you know, have the males be females in roles that you'd always seen as traditionally male, as the lore had always shown were always male. Well, boys and girls, some things have come out. There's some leaks that have come out about the new Custodes Codex, and it's exactly what we feared. A lot of people have been worried that this was going to happen with, of course, Warhammer 40K because of some of the things that had happened in the past when they'd done certain changes and kind of quasi kind of coincided or kind of bowed down to the D.I.E. kind of people, the diversity, inclusion, and equity kind of people out there. Um, so it's one of them situations where some people kind of said this was already happened, that Warhammer 40K and Games Workshop had already gone woke. I really didn't think that was the case. I thought maybe they were just being a little extremist. But at the end of the day, boys and girls, it is a very slippery slope. It doesn't take much. They say the path to hell is paved with good intentions. They're like, hey, we'll just do this one thing for us, right? Get rid of the get rid of the slaves in your game. So that's kind of offensive. You know what I mean? Let's get rid of those. And then, oh, you know, let's, you know, let's do this. Let's introduce some of this kind of stuff. And then it's just one thing after another, one thing after another. And then we come to a poor position there now. The custodies have now been retconned into officially having females apparently since the very beginning now how this is possible considering this is stated absolutely zero anywhere in the lore in any way shape or form and also even in some of the older editions of the custodies book specifically they said that there were sons and nephews that were taken to end up from some of the higher up families that ended up becoming and turned into custodies because one of the things that a lot of people understand is Custodians aren't space marines. Well, maybe a lot of people, actually, a lot of you hardcore Warhammer for are going to know this is going to be completely and totally normal for you. But custodians aren't space marines, right? They're just souped up, genetically perfected human beings. They are peak humanity. They're what humanity could be if all of their, everything was turned up to the nines, right? If everything was turned up to 11 about a human, that's what it could be, right? And these, they're the guardians for the emperor. They're like his personal guard, right? They're the gold boys, the banana boys. Beautiful. It's also Henry Cavill's favorite uh, army as well. It's his favorite faction. This is Superman's favorite faction, right? Well, there were some leaks that came out over the weekend about the Custodes' new codex that came out. Of course, they ended up getting all over Reddit. A lot of people are talking it, and now they are retconning female Custodes and saying, essentially, that they have always been there. There's a new story specifically in the Custodes Codex that we're going to get into here in just a second. But this is what got first got put out to me by one of our very fine channel viewers out there who watches our live streams Monday through Friday on Rumble every day at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. This is what he sent to me. So Gris is official, Warhammer, this is from the Warhammer official, this is their actual Twitter account, which why they don't have like a gold check mark or even a blue check mark, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Maybe they don't want to pay Elon the money, which also could give us a sign about them as well. Green or gold, pre order orcs and adeptus custodies, codexes, battle box, and more to pick your side. So that's the new little fun thing right there, where we've got orcs going up against custodies, right? So Karn Eater of Worlds here, don't know who this guy is, but it's somebody asked this question and, War and Warhammer official responded. Why did you nerf the new custodies? Why are female custodies a thing now? Why retcon them in? Which Warhammer official has responded to, in regards to female custodians, they have always been female. Custodians, there have always been female custodians since the first of the 10,000 were created. Now, if that's the case, 
why haven't we heard about this in the lore anywhere? Why has there never been a story up until now about a female custodian? Because they didn't actually exist. This is a 100% a retcon, right? And it's one of them situations where there's a lot of people that are going to be in arguments for both sides of this kind of situation. Of course, there's my boy right there, Vulcan Lives, because yes, he points out right here, am I a joke to you? The Sisters of Silence were supposed to be the female version of the Custodes, right? They were supposed to be the crazy psychers out there, well, crazy anti-psychers out there, really. They could completely and totally negate all of your powers, right? That's what they were supposed to be. They were supposed to be your alternative for that, just like the, ba the Sisters of Battle were your alternative for Space Marines, since fem Space Marines can't be female, and they've mentioned that a lot in the lore, and that's one of the other things that worries a lot of fans out there, is if this is going to open up the door to female space reads, which is something that has been re-said constantly in the lore that females cannot become space marines, only men can. Now, I watched Major Kill video about this, and he's a little more neutral on this kind of thing. He's like, I don't think this is going to be that big a deal, as long as it's something that's kept to a minimum, as long as it's not something that's overused. His fear, his worry, is that what they're going to end up trying to do is turn the custodians into a 50-50, or uh, what he thinks they, what he doesn't think they're going to do, at least what he thinks would be a really bad idea, was for them to try to force ex excessive diversity into it and make it to where it's a 50-50 split. He's okay if it's just like, okay, yeah, occasionally there's a, there occasionally there's a perfect human out there that could be the, could also be peak human and could be a custodian, just happens to be a female, right? But he said they shouldn't have a bunch of big boobies. All you should have is a different head model and that's it. And he's a custodian fan as well. So he seems to be okay with this. But here's the thing, boys and girls. History doesn't just repeat itself. It also rhymes. We have seen stuff like this happen time and time again across all of the rest of our franchises. We've seen it happen to Marvel. We've seen this happen to DC. We've seen this happen to Star Wars. We've seen this happen to Disney. We've seen this happen to Pixar. I mean, pick a franchise out there. It's happened a video game franchise all kinds of stuff saints row there's a million other versions out there that we could talk about so this isn't the first time something like this happened and this is always the first steps right it's always just oh just give us a little bit just shove us a little just let us shove you a little bit and then initially they're shoving you out the door and taking your seat and taking over and completely and totally destroying your franchise now i hope that's not what happens I honestly, to be completely and totally fair on this, I hope Major Kill is completely and totally right. That they do keep this to where it's just, you know, it's a one in a hundred thousand or it's a one in ten thousand or it's a one in a thousand, you know, female custodian. You know what I mean? Something like that. You know what? Then maybe they won't take it too far. But boys and girls, I think at the end of the day, there's a reason why I'm going to tell you I think they might end up taking it too far. But we're going to save that for a minute here because I want to jump over to this beautiful article over here from That Park Place. Because That Park Place has got some little insight in this and shout out to them doing it. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of articles about this, right? Right. We've got Warhammer 40K right here from this website, Head Topics, talking about this. It's talking about the exact same thing. Talking about Adeptus, uh, introduces Adeptus first female custodies uh, right here. Another one right here, Warhammer 40K female Adeptus custodies confirmed. We'll probably end up using this picture for the thumbnail, so thanks for that. Uh, balls, whatever your channel is, uh, souls.net. go check those guys out. But we love our friends over at That Park Place. We love John Trent, and of course, we love ourselves from WW Pro. So we're going to check out their article and give you all the juicy details and, of course, some of the context and also some of the actual examples as to why this is such a bad idea beyond what I've already talked to you about earlier. So Games Workshop retcons Adeptus Custodes by introducing female space marines, then lies about it. Okay, see, now that's one of my problems with that Park Place's website, and you can tell John probably doesn't know a lot about Warhammer 40k writing this article, which sucks. Probably should have reached out, probably should have asked something about this, maybe there's some more context to this, but as of right now... I don't, it's not female space marines. It's custodies. Adeptus custodies are not space marines, John. Um, I actually probably need to point this out to him on Twitter. Somebody remind me later. I'll point this out to him on Twitter. But yes, Adeptus custodies are not space marines. They are not. They're peak humanity. So Games Workshop, the company behind Warhammer, confirmed that it retconned the Adeptus custodies by adding female space marines. And see, and that's the problem with this article. They're not female space marines. They're female custodies. Custodies and space marines are different. So we'll just correct this article from here on out as we go. So confirm that it retconned the Adeptus custodies by adding female custodies. They have also lied about it being a retcon, obviously. Yes, we pointed that out as well on their Game Workshop's own tweet out there. We looked at their actual account. It's not just a screenshot. You guys saw their account. You can go look at it for yourself right there. So as reported by the Archcast, and like I said, I had friends out there in my chat that were telling me about this, who shared an excerpt from the CODIS. It states, Custodians Kaladisi Torvali Kesh stood upon the bridge of the Cobra class destroyer. Named Vigilant Flame. And if you want excerpts of this, you want to see screenshots of it, they're all over Reddit. You can go check it out. You don't have to believe us. You don't have to believe um, Archcast for sure. Uh, but you can just check this out. This is, But this is all the experts that we've seen. We've seen confirmation of all this kind of stuff from everybody. So just go check it out if you want the actual excer excerpts you can look at the screenshots yourself for. Um, the warship belonged to the mighty battle fleet Solar. She lingered in the shadows. She, at the back of the bridge, positioned at a spot where she could observe the actions of every crew member, be they in the instrumentation pits, at the armament shareness or the cast at the case of shipmaster Lithric, stood ramrod straight before his command throne 
to dissuade individuals who might counter the excerpt doesn't confirm she's an Astartes custodes, but she could be a sister of Siren. Art shared another excerpt from the Codex that shows her wielding a guardian spear. Kesh was warned before anyone else aboard, sensing a sudden empiric energy spike, coupled with a surge of overpressure and sharp temperature drop that preceded a teleport strike. Her guardian spear, which custodies are the only ones that get guardian spears, especially ones that only get issued guardian spears, was leveled and armed before the first cry of alarm or howl of a klaxon rang through the bridge. And here you can see the actual screenshot right here as you carry on klaxon rang throughout the bridge. Armored shuttles rattled down over exterior viewpoints, a futile gesture of warding against foes who had already boarded the very nerve center of the ship. As the teleport flared and a quintet of hucking figures were revealed, Kesh found herself fixed firmly under the targeting reckless of several ballistic grenade launchers. Despite staring down enough firepower to tear even her Gene Smith body apart, which that's what they do with the custodies, she could not resist a wintry smile. Shield Captain Nicodemus, she said, by a way of greeting. So I did to point out major retcons. Uh, from there, Arch points out how this is indeed a major retcon by citing previous codexes that describe these custodies as men. One of the Marids, all custodies begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. It is a mark of incredible prestige to surrender one's child to this most glorious of callings with the Imperium. And many notable clans among the Terran aristocracy have willingly given up almost entire generations of newborn sons just to earn it. So once again retconning and violating their own lore for the sake of what diversity inclusion and equity starting to feel like that as why i believe this change was made art shared it's simply just a political power play that's all it's ever been yada 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 everybody anybody that's heard anything about arch knows kind of knows his opinions knows his issue of course with games workshop and a lot of that kind of stuff some of which was kind of brought in by their on their own stuff and this once again is the own clip as well so once again this is where we get into some things that are interesting and this is the other one right here this is the one that I was going to bring up. This is for, you got Asmongon right here doing this one, Blackholder Vanguard right here. So this is their shareholder statistics. And of course, that part place has got this one as well. So this is one of the things where I think this might not, this will end up being a slippery slope, right? This is why I think this will end up being a slippery slope. Because of this right here, you look at who's invested in this company. The following interest in three or more of the issued shared capital at 29 February 24 have been disclosed by the company. This is from shareholder statistics. This is from the Warhammer website, right? Number one. Bally Guilford, 11.6%. BlackRock, 6.56%. Vanguard Group, 494 Now, what do you notice about those names, boys and girls? BlackRock and Vanguard have been the major Wall Street corporations out there investing in major corporations, gathering up more shares, gathering more influence inside of these companies to in order to get them to implement and push the DIE agenda, the diversity, inclusion, and equity nonsense. And we've seen it destroy companies time and time and after again. It has divided fan bases. It has completely and totally destroyed franchises. It has completely and totally destroyed companies and if games workshop wants to continue to go down this path and listen to blackrock and vanguard group then they're going to end the exact same way the saints row studios did the exact same the way star wars is in its current condition you will end up being a dead franchise that no one pays attention to that we only laugh and mock and ridicule every time you try to put a new product out there games workshop don't do that don't become this i hope major kill is right that this Adeptus Custodes adaptation with these females is just one in a hundred thousand, one in a thousand, one in a million. It's a very rare and unusual thing because it would take a very rare and unusual woman to amplify all of the things masculine that there are about a custody. It would take a very unusual person to do that. This is not going to be common. This is not going to be normal out there. Okay. Most people don't make it through the processes to become this souped up, to have your body turned up to 11. Okay. Most people don't survive the process. So it's going to be even rarer in this situation for, for people who are generally smaller in stature and size and everything else, like a lot of women are. It's just the way of things. So when you look at it like this, this right there is what gives me pause to think that Major Kill is not going to be right, that, they're, that they are going to overuse this, that they are going to end up trying to retcon these custodies into being 50% female, 50% male. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that's not what happens because I love the Warhammer 40k universe. I'm excited about what Henry Cavill is going to do with it going forward. I'm excited about the new models. I'm excited about all the new lore with the lion being back now and Cypher being escaped from his cage and out there running around and doing his thing. I'm excited about everything that's going on out there. 
And I want to see what comes next. And I want to keep being excited about it. I want to keep buying plastic crack and attempting to fail and miserably hope to plan to paint models at one point and learn to play fully and totally the wrath and glory system and be able to present that stuff to you guys so you guys can enjoy us doing role playing things like that. I want to do all of that, Games Workshop. I want to give you my money. Don't screw this up. If you are going to do this, and you obviously have already done it, and you're going forward with it, that's been confirmed by your very own Twitter account, right? Your very own Twitter account, that has been confirmed. Be smart. Do what Major Kill said. Keep it sparingly, keep it rare. And people will accept it, and they'll move on, and it won't be a big deal. It'll just be a little bump in the road, and everything will be going back to just being hunky-dory for the majority of the Warhammer 40k fan base. But if you push this, if you go too far too fast, I promise you, you will see a backlash like you have never seen from a fan base ever before. Because Warhammer 40k fans are stagnant. They are stacked. They are ferocious. They are hardcore, and they are very in lockstep with a lot of this kind of stuff. So don't screw it up, Games Workshop, because otherwise you may have damaged one of your favorite and Henry Cavill's favorite factions for all time. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Maybe Major Kill will be right. Maybe I'm will. It's only a matter of time before we find out, boys and girls, because that codex is coming very, very shortly, and we know how quickly Games Workshop likes to get out new models, so we're going to see what happens. It's only a matter of time. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. Enjoy the credits.